So anyway, we'll get started. There's a couple of people here that uh, didn't go with me on a previous trip. Mm -hmm. And so uh, wish you called me. Huh? <laughs> wish you called me. <laughs> so uh, uh, I mean, it was a big tour thing we announced. Uh, everybody was welcome. Uh, I'm gonna just break that. So uh, if for any reason, this is a, not a large room, if for any reason people have trouble hearing me, just let me know and I can get on that real soon. Um, so the, yeah, uh, I've been to Japan many times. Um, three, two years ago, we organized a group to go to Japan to go to Kamaket. Ostensibly to go to Kamaket, but generally speaking, just to go to Japan, get a feel for it, have a good time and whatnot. So uh, this is just uh, a panel to talk about my experience going, what you can look out for, what you might find interesting or whatnot. Just to clear the air, I know all of them went on that trip, and so I'm curious <laughs> to hear like their comments about it. Is there anyone in this room, because I know Julian who just walked in, just not put this profile, is there anyone in this room who has never been to Japan before? Okay, all right. So at least then I'm not gonna bore you by talking about stuff like, here are the basics, like yeah, yeah, I already know. <laughs> all right. So, um, uh, like for me, 15 years ago, uh, going to Japan was one of those things that I, was, I, I told my wife, like, okay, we've just like, got to do this or we're never going to do it. It'll always be that thing that we say I want to do, but I just never get around to. Um, it's not as, as expensive as you might think, and it is pretty simple relatively speaking, to get around over there. So I would say if you want to go, you know, start setting aside a little bit of money once a month to build up a, you know, what you need to get there and go. Um, our first time we went for a couple of days just to like break the ice and, and to make sure we would have done it at least once. That is way too short a time to go. Uh, if nothing else, the flight from Texas the fastest flight from Texas, like direct from Houston or Dallas to Tokyo, is like 14 hours. And so, if you're going to spend 14 hours on the plane, you better make sure that you have enough time to enjoy yourself in Japan. You could crank it out in like a day or two, but you're not going to see anything, and uh, it's you're going to question why you sat on a plane for 15 hours to make that happen. So, uh, I would say give yourself bare minimum bare minimum a week for your first time just because you want to be able to see a bunch of stuff and then you'll see like maybe what I should see next time. Uh, my advice, you're free to do whatever you want otherwise I can give you thoughts on how to do beyond what I'm saying but my advice is if you're going for a week or definitely less, stick to one city. I'm flying to Tokyo, I'm flying to uh, you know Osaka or you know maybe Okinawa, something like that, and just do one city. You're not gonna have enough time, because of, if nothing else, the transit between locations, to really appreciate more than that, unless you're going somewhere really small. Like, I'm going to this village that my friend's family is familiar with, and, you know, and after we do that, then we're gonna go over here to Sapporo or something like that. Uh, if, you, if you're going to Tokyo, for sure, you want bare minimum a week to, like, get into it, get comfortable, get, uh, get an idea of the thing. Uh, there are two major airports in Tokyo. There's Narita and Haneda. Haneda in the last five to 10 years has opened up for international flights. When it was, like prior to that, Haneda was pretty much just in, in Japan flights. The reason I note that is because Haneda is the airport that's like in central Tokyo. And Narita is like 45 minutes to an hour outside of central Tokyo. Um, that's that's just a level of things there. So if you fly to Narita, you've got another like hour just to get into Tokyo. Um, uh, if you're going your very first time, the other recommendation I would give is look into potentially some of the tourist services. Not necessarily use them, but look into them. Get an idea of some of the hotels that are on what's called the limousine bus route. Uh, the limousine bus is not like 
a limousine. <laughs> it is a bus. It is just the name they use there. But if your hotel is on the bus route, they will drop you off exactly at the hotel, which for your first time is huge because you can, the train will actually get there faster because they don't have to deal with traffic. It'll get directly to Tokyo, but then you're in a train station in central Tokyo. <laughs> you don't know where the fuck you are, and you're gonna you can't read anything, and so trying to navigate from there will be difficult. Um, again, if you're by yourself for your first time, if you don't have anyone that is familiar with the area, I don't do this, but I recommend it. I would say get a mobile hotspot. The main reason being because then you can use Google Map, you can use Google Maps, especially in the situation that like when you first get there, if you're in a train station, you don't know where you are, you can pull up your Google Maps and guide yourself to where you want to go. Uh, that Google Maps would be huge to help you get around. As one thing, if you if for whatever reason you don't want to spend money on a, on a hotspot or something, uh, to prepare yourself for a trip, you can also go to Google Maps and use Street View and basically like practice going from one place to another, just like looking at it from the street. As you're, I'm sure you're aware from using Google Maps in the US, it's not necessarily gonna be 100% accurate. There may have been construction here, these businesses may have changed, but you'll get a good idea of this is the route I'm going, and a fair number of things will still be the same. Now, the important reason why you either want like help navigating or practice doing that is because Streets in Japan are not intuitive at all. <laughs> they are not in grids, so don't even imagine that. And the street name labels are awful. You will not have any idea what this street is, and uh, and most addresses are not what you would think. Like based on America, we know that this hotel is on Pecan, or it's actually on Impact. But you're like, okay, if I can get to Impact Way, then here's the number on Impact Way, and I just increment down the street until I see the number. And if I pass it, I just turn around and go this way. Japanese directions are more like, this screen is a, is Tokyo. <laughs> this is section 10 of Tokyo. And this is building number eight or something in Tokyo. And that's your address. So you have to know this section is number 10 and this building happens to be number eight. And they're not in any way like completely intuitively sequential. So it's not like you'll go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, here's ten. It's more like, yeah, this is one, and then this is two, and this is three. So it, it gets because it, well, it, it basically like the train system in general, and like if you go to old cities like uh, New York, London, or whatnot, Tokyo is the same kind of thing that like it developed from like an agrarian horse and buggy kind of town into a major city, and so a lot of stuff is based on. Yeah, back in the olden days, this was relevant, and it's just not in today's society. When we were looking for a uh, restaurant at one point, we got horribly lost for like 45 minutes one time. Um, but, you know, that's, that's one of those you live and you learn kind of thing, which is why I, I don't recommend doing that. Uh, well, they, they did look like at someone's house. Yeah, in you know, the neighborhood. Yeah, so the one time we did an Airbnb, we have done that before. Uh, Airbnb, I would say, be cautious for two reasons. One is Japan, kind of like U.S. Some U.S. cities are doing this too. Japan's being, is trying to crack down a little bit on Airbnb, <coughs> so they are harder to to get to. Uh, the other thing is, depending on the size of group you're going with, the uh, houses are not going to be as uh, spacious. Definitely not as spacious and not necessarily as in terms of what they have amenities as you would expect from U.S. house. So, like, I, when I went to Airbnb, a group we went before our group, like, we went with a larger group of, like, eight people, and we got an Airbnb. I went through a bunch of Airbnbs that were like, we have space for up to ten people. What that means is they have futons on the floor for up to ten people. Mm -hmm. that's, that's notable for two reasons. One is if you don't want to sleep on a futon, then that's not a place you want to go. But more importantly, one bathroom. So you could get 10 people in this house and share one bathroom. Uh, it took us a long time to find a, an Airbnb house that was that said they had accommodations for eight people that had two bathrooms. I think maybe two and a half, like maybe a second, a third toilet or something. But but that's so that's uh, 
Like, like here in the US, if you have three bedrooms and you're like, okay, yeah, I got at least two bathrooms or something. So don't, like, make sure to dig into the details if you're gonna look for an Airbnb because there's things like that that are, are gonna Pay be attention to size. Like, oh, yeah, because yeah. one of the ones we were looking at said it could accommodate four people, but we looked at the actual size and we're like, there's no, no. way. <laughs> no, I would not. I would be like, even just the two of us would have been like a lot, and we had one more person coming with us this time, and we're just like, that's not good. Double beds are even full American double mm -hmm. beds. Yeah, and if you're American size trying to fit on a double bed, good luck. Mm. So, speaking of that, yeah, so when you look at hotels, one of the, I always tell people this. One of the most interesting things about hotels to me is make note in your head. Just know and be aware that Japanese rooms are small. And so the funniest thing to me when I first went looking at hotels, you look at a picture, like they have pictures of the room, just like American hotels often do. And so they had a picture of the room, and it's like, here's two beds, and there's a table between, and blah, blah, blah. And you look at it, and you're like, Oh yeah, no, that's that's huge, that's great. We have plenty of room, blah, blah, blah. But what I didn't understand is when you look at an American room, there's two beds and a table. Those beds are queens mm -hmm. in an American hotel. In a Japanese hotel, at best, you're like maybe uh, a, a twin or oh, like sorry. one and a half or something. Yeah, at worst and more commonly, those are singles. So these are small beds, but in your head you're thinking, no, I'm used to like that being a queen bed. So you you mentally scale it to be like so there's there's like three yards between the bed. No, there's like six inches because it's like because these are smaller beds than you're thinking. Uh, and so just keep in mind, yeah, the rooms are very small. You're gonna have room for your bed. You have room to like walk around the, the bed, and that's pretty much about it. Uh, yeah, no bathrooms are the same way. Like they they do the most efficient use of space possible. We we had. Uh, We've had a couple of hotels where the sink literally swivels. Mm -hmm. So there's like a basin where you can wash your hands and you can swivel it over the tub. And the tub will be really freaking tall. That, Japanese, that surprised me. Japanese like to take their bath. So uh, yeah, like the tub will be like this tall. So yeah, you're, yeah, it's like almost as tall as this table. Mm -hmm. So you're like stepping over massively just to get into the tub and take a shower. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, just to give an idea of expense, you can actually get flights right now pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't go right now because of the Olympics, but uh, um, when we did our, our group, you can go for, like, you can comfortably make arrangements for 2000 per person. Uh, you can do cheaper than that. It is possible. The big things that come into play at that point is how flexible are you with your dates and how comfortable do you want to be? Uh, you can get flight if you're lucky. You can get flights out of Texas as cheap as around six to seven hundred dollars. That's that's like really good. Like I've seen potentially as low as like five fifty, but that really depends on the exchange rate. You know what kind of features are going on in the world and whatnot. But like I wouldn't think you're going to get that. Anywhere between six and eight hundred, I think is achievable normally if you're just if you're really flexible on date and you just really want to go uh if you have 800 to 1200 you can you should be able to book anytime you want to go so if you want to go during the popular times you want to you want to go to comic head you want to do certain things that might be in a heavy season you can get a flight for that amount uh hotels are a little trickier because you can get hotel, like you can get a capsule hotel as cheap as like 20, 30 bucks a night. Uh, you can get an Airbnb that would be around 40, 50 bucks a night. And you can even get hotels that will also be in that range, 50, $60 a night at cheapest. Um, normal would probably be, like for a business hotel, would probably be like 80 to $100, and you know, just like the US. For decent, and then if you want, you know, really nice hotel, yeah, you can pay as much as you want. You want to pay a thousand dollars a night, you can totally do that. They'll hook you up. But uh, if you're trying to go more budget, you can pull that off. So if you were going like a week, six nights at like eighty dollars, that's like five hundred bucks. And then, like I said, if you can get a flight for around eight hundred, okay. Well, now for your essentials, you're talking essentially fifteen hundred dollars. And anything after that is just fun money. That assumes you're completely flexible when you go and you're just like looking to 
fit everything in. Uh, all of, any requirements you might have are going to make that a little more limited. Uh, if you don't know any Japanese at all, uh, that's okay, if, especially if you're staying in Tokyo. Uh, Osaka would probably be all right too. Any of the major cities that are used to seeing a lot of tourists, you'll be okay. If you want to go out to this little village in the sticks because you saw it on TV and it looked great, there's a good chance nobody there speaks English and not many of your signs are going to be in English either. So good luck with that. Uh, again, people will be really, generally speaking, most people I've interacted with are friendly. They will try to help you out, but how successful they'll be is a crash. I can recommend an ebook that is how to travel in Japan without speaking Japanese and specifically for going outside of major cities, but it's basically going to help you with a very, very basic. Yeah, well, and the other, another thing that's more recent is uh, you can set Google Translate on a phone to work offline. You download a measure of a dictionary and at least for simple phrases like, where's the bathroom, I need to get to my hotel, how can I get a taxi, any of that stuff, you can totally translate your phone. So you can talk into it or you can type it in and you can get translation. You can show people and... People were a lot more receptive to that than I expected while mm -hmm. I was over there. Yeah, and they, they appreciated the effort. Generally speaking, you will find that there, because you're, because you're white, because you're not Japanese, they'll be, especially, yeah, no, especially if you're trying, yeah. they will be more receptive. And that's true for any country, I've heard, like, even notoriously rude France, I've heard, if you're trying to speak French, they'll be, you know, nicer to you. I mean, if you go to New York and you speak, like, Spanish or something, and you don't try to speak English, they're gonna be just as rude. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I am in no way saying that we are, like, cool about this more than other countries by right. at all. Like, I went to Paris with my family once in 99, and surprisingly, we heard a lot of English there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Paris is way nicer than the Brits want to all you have to do is try. Okay, all right. I am in no way trying to bag on Paris or France or <laughs> Spain or whatever, but uh, um, oh, and so on the on the language thing, another really convenient thing. This has been true for a long time. It's more re so more recently in America, if you've gone to like McDonald's or something, the kiosks where you can like order for yourself. That's been a thing in Japan for a very long time in a bunch of restaurants. And as a bonus, if you if you pay attention, if you look close, they'll often have a button. Like the electronic ones will have a button that says English, and if you put if you press that, it'll convert everything on there to English. So like if you wanted to go to like a little ramen shop, again, and so if we're talking about like how much you're going to pay to eat, there's a bunch of what are essentially fast food restaurants in Japan that are you know they'll serve curry, they'll serve ramen, they'll serve soba, whatever. You'll go in there, they'll have a machine at the front. You order, you pick what you want on the machine. It'll give you a ticket. So like, if you're if you're uncomfortable trying to interact with people in a language you don't speak, you can go to this machine, enter what you want, sit down with your ticket. They will take your ticket and bring you back your food, and you don't have to say a word. <laughs> you can basically just be like, "Yep, this has been a completely clear transaction, and everything's fine." Uh, and at those machines, most of the time, they'll either have it written in Japanese and English. Or, like I said, they'll have a button that says English, and if you push that, your whole thing switches to English. And then at that point, you'll know what it is and you can order appropriately. Uh, the exchange rate is currently like 109. Uh, so, what that means is any price you see in yen is actually a little cheaper than this, but it's basically 100 yen is a dollar. So, if it's one yen, that's a penny. Uh, so, if you see something for 500 yen, that means you're paying five bucks. Uh, like I said, the exchange rate is slightly better than that, so it's actually more like, you can see five, uh, 500 yen, it's like 480, but, uh, but just think of it that way, and you just get a nice bonus of extra fun money you can spend on random stuff. Um, but jump in. Yeah, no, you, you will find ways to spend your money. And then it, I, just went up, so it actually works out, it's like 110 yen, which is what you pay after tax, is about mm. So you see, because it like... That depends, you know, well, uh, well, okay, so no, Japan, they don't, like, the tax is on the price. No, not no. And they just raise the price. Oh, okay, well, okay, so well. So there's some places that will show you both prices, and some places don't. Everywhere I've gone, the price you see is the price you pay. Yeah, the grocery stores, sometimes they don't have it, things like that. So, I, I, I've never had that problem in Tokyo. I, in Tokyo, I've yeah. never had that problem. Yeah, Tokyo, Tokyo's different, but, like, some of the places in the sticks, oh, yeah, right. like, they just assume that everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you don't go to the States, huh? <laughs> uh, 
so uh, another thing that a lot of you might have heard about if you've ever Japan is the, uh, the All Japan Rail Pass. So that's a pass that is good for 7, 14, or 21 days and uh, is good on all the JR rail lines, which is most of the trains, or and or buses and stuff like that. It's only available to foreigners and you pay like a couple hundred dollars and you get that for whatever span it is. Uh, if you are only staying in Tokyo, do not get the rail pass. It is not worth the money. Uh, it's, it's good, it's convenient, it's nice, but you're just not going to do it unless you are just like only riding the trains for giggles. Like that's what you do every day. Then you're just not going to ride enough trains to do it. If you go to Osaka, then for example, the bullet train itself to go to Osaka is going to be like $150 a month. And so at that point, your ticket, your your rail pass is paid for itself because the rail pass would be like 150, 200 dollars. So at that point, you have paid for the rail pass, and so totally get it, totally do it. It's worth it. But if you're staying in Tokyo, you'll spend on the high end like 15, 20 dollars a day on train tickets, and that, I mean that's pretty high. So extrapolated over a week, you're talking like a little over like 120, 100. $40. So at best, maybe break even. But there's a lot of trains in Tokyo that don't accept the right, and that's, that's the other reason. So because it's just it's extra hassle. So like when you go to Tokyo, you should get a sweep card, which is basically a card that or or whatever the other brand is, but it's basically pass yeah, pass on, or which is basically a card. It's like a credit card, but the touch ones. So basically, you touch it, and it, it's like a debit card actually. You have an amount of money in there, and it just debits it from your account and then you can reload it whenever you get empty. Um, if you have the rail pass, you have to go through a specific gate at the train station and show them your pass. It is not electronic. You actually show it to them and they're like, okay, yeah, we'll get you through. Uh, that's, that's a little more of a pain in the ass because, like I said, you have to go to a specific gate because you have to have the person see it. You can't just swipe it on the, on the thing like everybody else does. Uh, I recommend you get, you don't have to, but I recommend you get, like I said, a Swigger Pass my card uh, because it makes going through the gates super convenient and uh, you can also use it at convenience stores and a lot of vending machines, so it's a cash equivalent that you can carry around. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can buy each ticket individually, but then you have to go to a board and see where you're going and figure out how much you have to pay to get to a specific stop. Do it, it's just a lot more complex and not necessarily worth the hassle. Um, Reloading those are really easy too. Oh, yeah, you just go to the machine and put in more money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you can also get Snooka on your phone, so if you have like, an automated pay, you don't even have to get a card. Yeah, that's that's next level shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the other reason I make that is if you, if you get your short of cash, because Japan is a very, very cash based mm -hmm. society. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't, I want to be able to do this, but I need to put on my credit card. You can only do that through the app. So in in the 15 years since I went the first time, I will say Japan has gotten much better about credit cards. Mostly, mostly like especially department stores and whatnot, or maybe like really nice restaurants. Definitely your hotel, you can use your credit card. But if you're going to like especially a small mom and pop restaurant, if you're going to some small stores, especially some fan stores, they're probably not going to take your credit card. They might, if you're lucky they will, but I wouldn't expect it. You definitely want some cash. Uh, on that point, do not, do not ever exchange your money in an American airport. Ever. <laughs> Uh, the exchange rate in Japanese airports is actually pretty good. I'm not going to say it's the greatest, but it is pretty good. You'll get a decent exchange rate. American airports will ring you out the ass. You will get completely screwed on how much money you get. If you really want to exchange in America, talk to your bank or something like that. See about some banks do, uh, do currency exchange and they're going to charge you like 1% or something like that. Uh, and then, like I said, in Japan, the airport is pretty good. Uh, you can also there are also some ATMs. The most notable is 7-Eleven. If you go to 7-Eleven in Japan, you can go to their ATMs, use an American ATM card. Not all Japanese ATMs take American cards, so keep that in mind. But 7-Eleven uh, is one that does. 
and you'll pay whatever fee to use the machine and then the prevailing exchange rate or whatever. Um, so I can keep going. Uh, I wanted to take a moment. Does anyone have any specific questions or something that they're curious about that they would like answered? Or do we just want to keep rolling with like thoughts and, and comments and whatnot? Okay, so at any point, if something does come to mind, raise your hand or let me know, and we'll try to, uh, to go there. Uh, so Rebecca, Danny, and Sean here all went on our, our last group trip where we, as a con, organized a trip. Uh, I was thinking we'll take a moment here to get their thoughts on that, because as far as I know, it was the first time for all of y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so like they, I don't know. What was, so what was your thoughts? Uh, I guess one of the things I didn't think would be an issue that surprised me when it was, and it makes sense now that I think about it, but uh, you know, Google Maps definitely helped out a lot. But uh, when you're in like in between all those big tall buildings, you are gonna lose signal very very often. So have a good idea of where you're going. Because uh, yeah, just trying to keep that signal sometimes is a struggle, and especially when you're relying on that to get get around. Yeah, that, that, that one surprised me. So to, to speak to, to this for a moment, like I said initially, I personally am against getting a mobile hotspot. This is, this is a personal hangout. That was like, with my mobile hangout. No, no, no. Oh, wait, okay. wait, uh, well, I'm going to tell you why. It's okay. not because of that. The, the reason I am against getting a, a mobile hotspot is because when we went on a trip before with some friends, this is my, some of them got a mobile hotspot, which helped a lot. Yeah. It would help for communication and everything. But my experience was some of the people that had mobile hotspots, this was their experience in Tokyo. Uh, oh no. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> there's certain things that you're used to doing on the internet mm -hmm. that you're just like, oh yeah, no, I'm just doing this stuff. And there is so much to see. Like, like when we were on the train from the airport to the hotel, that was them on the train. Like oh, I'm doing all this stuff on the phone. It's like are you like this is your first time? You're not like looking at like all the stuff there's. Even when so, I got dark, my face is like at the window for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just doing this on your phone. Yeah. So like even if you're so even if you do get a hotspot, like soak it in. Make sure you, you get an appreciation because you paid for this. <laughs> you, you know, get everything out of it that you can, because it's you know, you're there for a somewhat limited time. So anyway, that was just why I oh, said that. So instead of the mobile hotspot, this time I'm gonna try getting one of the uh, was it the SIM card? Yeah, I have a dual SIM card. I've done that. How did that work out for you? I mean, I've done that before. So uh, I've also done. I've actually done the thing before where I've had a separate a separate phone. Yeah. That I use for that. I mean, it works fine. The main thing I used it for. This is less of a problem with. Uh, it, so it depends on your phone service. This is less of a problem with T-Mobile, which I'm on, because T-Mobile International Roaming is actually pretty cool. Um, Signal is a crapshoot, but uh, yeah, that's the problem. But they're but they're. Uh, but their features overall are pretty cool. Uh, at and I think, was less so. So that, that's why I did it at one point when I was at t But the other thing that I got out of it specifically was, uh, since I was talking to a couple people over in Japan, it's easier to make uh, local calls. And so like, if they want to, like, in Japan, you get charged for a call, like, even just random local calls. So uh, you get charged as the caller, not as the receiver. Oh, okay. So basically, like, what we would do is he'd, like, message me and I'd call him, so he's not, he's not paying for it or whatever. But uh, but I mean that was also means you're you're communicating locally. They're not trying to call like an American number mm -hmm. or, or me doing the other. One. So uh, but if you're not doing that, it's six one half dozen the other. The the thing I pay close attention with that. Uh, my understanding again, Galena did it last time, but I haven't. Uh, my understanding is the mobile hotspots are unlimited data. The yeah. phones no, not it's... always. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah yeah no I mean but I'm saying the phone. Usually you have a set amount yeah, of data. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you need to watch out for that. I would be good enough with one thing because I do the same thing unless it's friends and friends friends for five dollars a month you can get unlimited text calls and data over in Japan, but you have to ask for it. Yeah. But GPS in Japan does not work the way GPS in America does. You'll be standing in one spot and your GPS will say, I'm in this corner, I'm that corner. And like you just watch the dot. And you really have to learn how to like pretend it's a compass, and then <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so yeah. awesome. yeah. oh, it's it's the same thing. So. Be, because like in like things are in all four corners of the intersection, and so you can't just turn left because it doesn't know exactly where you are. So yeah. you just have to I learn is a learning curve. Yeah, yeah. I used to yeah, Google to find things, and I just had to start walking in a 
the direction and see if that see if it's yeah. Fine. See if it was the direction I think it yeah. is. I had to do that too. You're like, oh, no, of course, correct. Same thing, be on my brand. It is in the whole truth. Yeah, I mean, some of the hot spots are exactly the same, but GPS is just, it works, but it's not as good. It's not there. <laughs> okay, on, on that note, if you've traveled internationally before, you already know this, but. Uh, Similar to that, yeah. If you're if you're going to keep your phone, your particular phone service active, if they do international roaming, talk to your service, let them know. Also, talk to your bank. So, like, if you're going to use your ATM card while you're over there, make sure they know you're there, because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise they'll they'll lock you out, potentially cancel your card because they think it's stolen. Same with any credit cards. Like, notify all these people. It sucks, but notify all these people and let them know specifically when you're gone and when you're there. Uh, hey, it's better to do that than have a canceled credit card. Oh, no, no. My dad, when we went to uh, Ireland at one point, the machine ate his card. Cause, because he didn't let them know like, what was going on. It was like, like his first ATM, his first ATM visit, everything went fine, so he didn't think about it. His second one, boom, it like, sucked it in and it was gone. And uh, yeah, we had talked to the bank about like recovering all that later. It was, it was an exciting day at the point. But, uh, but that, yeah, that's why you let them know. Uh, they're doing a lot to prevent fraud, to try to prevent fraud. So that's that's why they do that. Uh, so what else? I mean, you know, thoughts, comments. Well, I use T-Mobile, and uh, yeah, when we went over there. Well, not just about phones. Not about phones. Trip. No, not <laughs> but, you know, this is like my own experience. But I had a pretty good experience with my phone. I, I didn't get a SIM card, or I didn't even bother using mobile uh, hotspot. But uh, yeah, I was able to send out all my texts, uh, communicate on Discord, and. Uh, Get enough signal data transfer to use Google Maps. Yeah. You just go there, you can choose. But it's like the speed is really slow. Yeah, it's just 2G. Sprint's like But if you add, I think it's like $10 a month onto that plan, you get 4G and it's unlimited. So I have to do that the last time I went. It's pretty much anywhere. You just add it to your plan and you get the 4G powers. And in some cases, there are 5G already. And another thing with the ATM card, in Japan is the same thing. Um, if you accidentally put your card into a machine that is not international and it's just local, because this happened, I don't know if Tokyo never happened, but it happened when I was living in Fukuoka. But if you, besides someone alone, the one that does take international cards, if you just find an ATM machine and you put your card in, it will get your card. And then you'll get this lovely little icon of a guy bowing to you and be like, hey, Oh, so that actually reminded me, completely irrelevant to that, but uh, that reminded me of a, a funny story. So uh, one thing to keep in mind, this this is good advice for any foreign country, period, but definitely with Japan, is uh, go in with the expectation that they do not speak English, but in your head, understand they might. So <laughs> my favorite story, like even if they don't want to tell you that, because my favorite story for that is when Galena and I were on like our second trip over there, uh, her, or like her uh, digital camera broke, so we like needed a new digital camera. So we go into this, you know, this really nice electronics store and everything, and you know they see tourists and everything and whatnot, and they've got all their cameras out, and they're they're like, you know, hi, but you know, like oh, you know, hello, but I don't really necessarily speak English or whatever. And so I'm looking at cameras, and basically there's this one, and I'm like, okay, yeah, this one seems like a good camera for us. I just have one question about it, like with this SD card. So I look at the salesman and I'm trying to ask him, like, okay, you know, like, does it take, the, like, try to do this in slow English so, you know, maybe you can get, hear me, like, does it take this kind of English? Or like, uh, I, you know, I don't know. And so I was like, ah, screw it, you know, I can deal with it if it doesn't. So I look at the guy, I'm like, okay, well, you know, fine. Like, as I've done it, multiple times, will be like, you know, I'll buy this one. Literally, was told like I was gonna buy it. Perfect English. He's ready to tell me how. Do I want to get on their service plan? Do I want to be a, like, uh, a repeat customer or whatever? He just didn't want to deal with my question at the time or whatever. He thinks I'm just trying to waste his time or something. So always 
consider that some of these people do, at least, even if they don't necessarily speak it clearly, but they do understand English. So they're like, uh, you know, again, just to be polite, but if you don't like look, don't like stand right in front of the Japanese person, be like, these people are all idiots, and you don't think that they don't know what you're saying, because <laughs> you're you're gonna probably be wrong more often than you're not. Um, anyway, that was just my my They also take English in school, oh, yeah, yeah. but then they don't feel comfortable speaking. Oh yeah, so yeah. they can understand much better than they can. No, I mean that's that's me with some of my Japanese. I, I try to force myself past that because, like, yeah, I've taken Japanese and I actually can can speak halting past the Japanese. And I'll try, like, when I hang out with people, I know I will try. But yeah, it gets rough because I had one time I went to a restaurant and I I gave them what Japanese I had and I and I like did not say what I was trying to say. So the it, the final experience was amusing in its own way, but. You know, and they were they were trying also on their end to come at it, but it, yeah, it's there. It, I have a much wider vocabulary in English, so trying to, to translate that myself just doesn't happen. Right? <coughs> um, yeah, no. So, uh, like I said, if you're if you're trying to go cheap, you can you can like depend on how you define cheap. Uh, I would say like a bare minimum is around fifteen hundred dollars, and you can make that happen. Uh, anything above that is just how much more or how much better your experience will be. Um, the nicest hotel we stayed in, it was actually like on like discounted at the time, so it was around $100, $120, but that one was like really close to the train station. And then we've also stayed like, Ecuador was, we stayed at Airbnb in Ecuador, and it was cheap and it was out in the neighborhood, which was really neat in its own little way. Like we, another fun thing, like the, next to the train station there's a karaoke place, and uh, like on the third day, we went there, and we had so much fun. We went there for like two other days after that. <laughs> and so by the time we left, like we were literally leaving Japan, they came and offered us like a frequent visitor card to go to their caravan uh -huh. place for free. Because we we're like, oh yeah, no, you all have fun. Come hang out for like five hours during karaoke until dawn. And uh, yeah, and that was also another one we're trying to use our broken Japanese, because the karaoke places are really neat. You get a little booth to sit in there, and you can have a party, and you can order food and drinks, and, you sing your songs, and then you get on the phone and you tell them, yeah, we need more beer or whatever, but obviously you're supposed to do this in Japanese, so you're like, and you're not even in front of them, so you can like pantomime the shit, you're trying to just do this on the phone, and you're like, uh, yeah. Um, oh, the other funny story, other little thing about uh, experience in Japan, the button, the napkin button. So uh, uh, when we went to a restaurant, uh, there was this, at every table, there's a little spot that has your sugars, your napkins, and it had a little button. And we're like, we're sitting there talking, and we're like, what's the button for? And we're like, I don't know, maybe it makes the napkins come up or something? <laughs> so we push the button, nothing happens. Like, 10 seconds later, the waiter comes up, like, do you need anything? Since I'm used to, in America, waiters coming by every now and then check if I need anything, it's like, no, we're fine. So they walk away. <laughs> So we go back to wondering what this button's for. We push it again. Ten seconds later, the waiter shows up again. It's like, do you need something? And I'm like, no, we're good. <laughs> so like after the second or third time, the guy told us, so this, or no, I don't think he even told us. We just like, I think the button. <laughs> so so yeah, most most restaurants, as service places in general, your people are not going to be. Like attentive, like they are, they are, but I mean they're not going to be like hovering over your table, like do you need anything now? Do you need something? No, you actually like notify them. Look, I need service, and they'll come by and do whatever you need. They'll be very prompt, and they'll do exactly what you need. But you have to let them know that we need, you know, we need attention. If you're just waiting for them to show up, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Question in regards to that: Is is Japan a tipping country? Or it is not. It is not. Okay. You do not tip. Okay. And you do not hand them cash. They always have a little tray. It's yeah. that's like the biggest faux pas you can do is try to hand some cash. It's not right biggest, but I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, there's One a bunch of other things. Yeah. Only the flea market. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, as far as booking hotels go, is there like a specific website you recommend, or do you just Google hotels in where? So, okay, so, so that depends. Uh, some hotels, uh, very few, well, I don't say very few, some hotels, especially chains, well, actually, like they're used to dealing with foreigners, and you can actually find an English version of their website, and you can navigate it all yourself and make the reservations. Uh, some of them, well, now usually that's like the really cheap ones or whatever. Uh, like a capsule hotel, I, I mean, you're not even 
bother reserving that, you show up. I mean, some you should, depend on where you're going because of just how frequent it is, but uh, that's that's an experience. There are certain websites that will also like... TripAdvisor is actually yeah. going to deal with the Japanese tourist agency, and it's all in English, so everyone on there expects you to speak English. So if we think of TripAdvisor is just yet another yeah. uh, aggregator in America, but they have a huge influence in Japan. So if you just want to find a place to start, that's one of the... Two others that are quite major. I think Agoda actually has a decent Agoda, aggregation. And, and uh, TripAdvisor will send you to Agoda, and the, uh, Veltro is the other one. But like, if you send, if you go to TripAdvisor, they'll send you to the others. So yeah, if you just if you just want to look at stuff, I would say go to like Agoda or like say TripAdvisor and compare like before trying to drill into a specific. Unless you just have a specific one in mind that you want to deal with. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a couple others you can. I mean, there's also some other ones like you know how good you feel about, but like. Japan hotels or something like that. I don't remember the exact site, but I mean, like, you can do a Google search for like Japan hotels. And there is like a, a Japan tourism board, like the JRTO or something like that. That they also have their own. That they, you know, they talk to the hotels. And so I would say with that, more get an idea of like what amenities they offer and how much, generally speaking, how much it costs, and then maybe drill into. And this is true to me for flights also. Like I go to kayak for flights, but. If you don't see numbers you like, check other sites and just start like trying to figure out what it works out for. I mean, if you're trying for the best deal, then yeah, extra research is just going to help you out. I mean, the worst case is just wasting time where everybody agrees. But best case is like this site happens to have cheaper rates for some reason that is not clear. Um, and so yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a good way to go. The but I would say if you're going for a very first time, your first consideration. I mean, cost should play a big role, but your first consideration should be how easy is it, get, is it to get to? Because if you've never been to Tokyo and you're not, if you're, if you're really comfortable walking around a place you don't know, then fine. But if you're not, you're, you're gonna arrive, you're gonna be in a big city that's really complicated to get around, like really confusing, and you're gonna have a bunch of luggage. And you're gonna be like, you're gonna be walking the streets of a major metropolitan city with a lot of luggage saying, where the hell is my hotel? <laughs> um, that's why I like. That's why I said like my first time there. If, you're, if you take the bus, it drops you off. Like there are certain hotels around that route. They'll be a little more expensive than some other business hotels you can get. But you can get like relatively inexpensive. You know, like, like I said, a hundred dollars, a hundred dollar night or so hotels. That it will literally drop you off at that hotel. Like here's the front door. Boom, you're there. And then, and then once your luggage is there and you have a place you know you're going to you can navigate to the train station and figure out how to get back. Like, another good example of this from my first experience when my wife and I went to Japan, we had our hotel, we're in Ikebukuro, the, the bus dropped us off at our hotel, we got in there, we were great, we walked to the train station, Ikebukuro train station is pretty big. Shinjuku station is the biggest, but, but Ikebukuro is pretty big. We went in there, took the train, went around, hit some stuff in, in, Japan, in Tokyo, we come back to Ikebukuro station to go to our hotel. We go walking around and not paying super close attention, go out the opposite side exit. So there's east and west. We were like staying outside the east exit or whatever, we go out the west exit. Kind of confused for a minute, just like, uh, this seems weird, but it's a new city, I haven't been there that long. So we just start walking. We walk around in circles for like 30 minutes before we realize we are completely, in the, like none of this looks familiar at all. Even the first 58 exits. We are, we are in the wrong part of town. And so we end up going back inside the train station and we realize, oh, we're in the completely wrong exit. And we popped out. No, yeah, the worst experience was to Shinjuku Station. I literally lost two people. And it took us an hour to find them again. Like, just in the train station. We didn't Shinjuku even go anywhere. has 87 exits. Oh, no, I laugh about that. Because when we were taking Japanese, one of the lessons, the lesson for learning the word big is Shinjuku Station is big. And the first time I read that, I laughed. I was like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Uh, but so it's, it's one of those things that uh, if you can get yourself directly deposited at your hotel, if you don't have a guide or something like that, that's really convenient. I mean, that was one of the reasons that I structured things as I did for our trip was like, we took the train in, but that's because I knew where I was going. And I, I led everybody to the hotel, and then from there, y'all could get the lay of the land and navigate and do well after that. And once we did, it was yeah. easy to walk about town by yourself. Yeah, once you've done it once or twice, then you can you get familiar, familiar with it. Yeah. But that very first time, you're like, 
it's culture shock. You're yeah. like, I don't read any of this. There's a lot of flashing lights. I don't know where I'm going. Basically, imagine yourself, if you've ever been, imagine yourself getting dropped in the middle of Las Vegas and being like, find this thing over here somewhere. You're like, what? <laughs> well, I have to say that that Google Maps really does help out a lot. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. again, I'm really worried about out there. Like the next day, I just venture it out. Like I said, I am against the mobile hotspot for this, but especially if it's your first time, I recommend it purely for navigation. I would completely recommend it just for navigation. I mean, it's kind of lost, boy. I was lost in that city. I had no sense of direction in that city. It was a blessing. You know? Yeah, I had a table thing. It's like me, I'm love life crash. So when I was at a hotel, I was making sure I was playing Japanese love life. <laughs> you know, like those events did. That's why I love the hot spot. I will uh, say the two things that will help you is common, little common sense and be and Texas politeness. You may get a lot of tourists and a lot of rude tourists over there. If you are polite, you, you move your seat for the old ladies, you you know, you, general hos Texas hospitality goes a long way over there. Because it stands you out from all the other thousand tourists who are like out of my way, I'm special, you know, so, showing tourists. So on that there. note, the the bare minimum I would say at bare minimum there are three, there are four work, there are four things you should know. Number one is arigato, which is thank you. Number two is sumimasen, which is excuse me, which will come in handy a lot when you're walking through crowds. Uh, the other two that I would put there are ikure desu which is how much does this cost? That's a little tricky because then the responses can get, they might think you know a little bit of Japanese and the response can be crazy. But it's good to know, worst case they'll point it to you. And final one, the ones that I would say you need to know these four before going, Dore wa doko desu ka, which is where is the map? <laughs> or anything wa doko desu ka is where is it? Like, and now again, it can be the reason I go with toilet wa doko desu ka, which is toilet wa doko desu ka. The reason I go with that one is because that gives you the basis of where is this, and your answer is usually going to be over there. <laughs> Versus if you ask them, where is my hotel? Like if I'm in if I'm in Ikebukuro Station and I know the name of my hotel, if I'm like such and City Prince, well, I'll go with this guy. You're gonna get directions. You're gonna get like, go down this street, take a right, and then take, but you're not gonna get those in English. You're gonna get, here's the directions, and you're gonna be like, I didn't follow any of that. <laughs> uh, so uh, like, try to keep it as simple as you can. The other, that's the other like, the Doga de Scott was a, another funny story, which again, going back to, they will appreciate at least a little bit of effort, which is why I say at least those four is good to go. Uh, our, when I lost uh, my wife and a friend in Shinjuku Station, I went, no, yeah, no, that happened. So, uh, I lost her and yeah, so, always lose over Tokyo. <laughs> just the, no, this was bad. This was like really bad. And so, uh, so I went to, I went to an info desk because we were supposed to meet at a Starbucks. We're supposed to meet other people at a Starbucks. And so, like, when I approach the info desk, the woman gets, like, eyes like saucers, like, oh, holy shit, it's a foreigner. I don't speak English. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, literally, that's the look she's giving me. She's trying to wave me off, like, no, I don't speak your language. This is, no, this is literally what happened. And now, to her credit, this wasn't like the store where it's like, oh, yeah, no, I don't speak English. I just want to deal with you. No, it's like, I don't speak Japanese. I don't speak English. So the fact that I went up to her and said, like literally in Japanese, like Starbucks what up with this guy? Then she like visibly relaxed, like, oh, oh. thank God, because <laughs> this was not gonna go well otherwise. And uh, but so well, at that point, the story is great. I love this story, everybody's happy, it's a happy ending. The reason that the it took like over an hour to find my wife and everything works out is so then she like, here's a map of Shinjuku Station. Like I said, fucking big. This huge map. Here's her answer. Coco, Coco, Coco. There's like five Starbucks that you can use. And so she like notes all of them, and I'm like, yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> you know? I mean, I told her, I didn't get to this guy. I didn't get to this guy. And then I walked away. But, uh, but that's what I'm saying. Like, a little bit of effort there will definitely put people more at ease and uh, make them a little more uh, excited to be talking to you or assisting you. If you're just like, yeah, I don't speak English, can you help me out? <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, so that's, that's something to, to keep in mind. Um, uh, the other thing is, um, Japan is a very reserved society, but 
as like as a foreigner, you're going to get the benefit of the doubt. So it's like you just don't know any better. Uh, and also, just for the benefit of communication, one of the things is like when you go to a restaurant, uh, especially if you're talking like the chain restaurants, like the Denny's, the uh, Jonathan's, which are the family restaurants, or a bunch of things. A lot of them must like you know like going to Benedict's or. Uh, we don't have Benjamin's anymore, but like Chili's or uh, Applebee's, they'll have a picture menu. And so what you can do with that is like, yeah, I want this. Or some of the, I've never done this, but everybody says you can, and I know this, this is a fact that they have this. A bunch of restaurants will have like sculptures of their food outside. And so in an absolute worst case, you can be like, let's go outside for a second and you can point to what you want. And they'll be like, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'll bring it to you or something. I guess we just done that. So yeah, yeah, no, I, I've heard stories. I've just, I have always not wanted to do that. Like, yeah. I, I am a very picky eater, but like that would be probably the one scenario where I'd be like, crap, shoot, we're doing this, and then whatever comes to the table, all right, we're gonna eat it because that's just the way this is gonna go. Because <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm like, I feel uncomfortable walking out there doing that, but yeah, I've heard, I've heard people do it. On a totally different subject, I do have one piece of advice, homework, because I have a funny story and this is the end. If you don't learn anything, you don't memorize anything before you go, watch some information about how to use the fancy Japanese goods. Because the problem is the buttons are not all labeled the same, so I spent three months there this year and there was still one toilet I could not figure out the buttons. <laughs> because the buttons are all different. Oh, on, the, on that note, so the four things I, I told you, definitely, those are four simple words or phrases that you should know. I'm going to add a fifth that I forgot. There are, you need to, before you go, you need, absolutely need to learn one of at least two kanji. One of the two. Men or women. Because there are bathrooms that will only be labeled in kanji. And then you got to figure out which one you're supposed to go in. <laughs> So you need to know, or you're just like, well, I guess I'm not going to bathroom now. I'm going to hold it till later. So uh, yeah, so make sure you know one of those two. If you know both, that's great. But if you can, if you have a very limited recollection, make sure you know at least one. If you have to, write it on a piece of paper and carry that with me because there will come a time. I've only had this happen once. There will come a time where you go to a place, you look at the doors, and it's like, I don't know. And what happened to me is I went in the wrong one. At one point. Now, now it was, it was a single person bathroom. That's my one, ex my one thing here. Is just, it was a single person toilet that you just yeah, you open it. It's, it's, it's like a uh, plane in the sense that you open it, there's a toilet in there, it's it, then you come out. But, like, if that was the extent of my story, then it'd be like, haha, it's a funny story. So, I, it was still kind of like that. I come out of the bathroom, and this guy, like, looks at me, he's like, <laughs> Ladies, are, I mean, you know, he like says it, like he says it in Japanese, which you know, made it all the worse because I didn't, didn't know exactly what he was saying. I was like, like hold on, and I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, that's, how, that's how we roll here. So yeah, that's that's the one that uh, that you want to to make sure that you're aware. Of. Uh huh. Okay, um, I'm not sure if you covered the show because I, I just remember you were doing this panel a bit ago, but. Uh, I, I'm actually dragging this one along, and she has certain food allergies. I mean, I know you know you can't really be too uh, pick, you know, selective like here in the states. Well, it'd be a good way to convey that if there's something certain with some a food allergy. Okay. Like, say, um, the like, best thing to do, and I can get you the website if I talk to you later. There are cards that you can get that are in Japanese. Really? That you can put what your allergy is, and you just because we don't want to seem like you know we're rude. It's just we yeah, all have oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm allergic to <laughs> octopus. Uh, Which in certain cities, good luck. Okay, so yeah. so the big problem. Okay, number one depends on your allergies. If you're allergic <laughs> to fish, you're bummed. Yeah, but, no, 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 uh, yeah, but I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, like like even stuff that is not this is a fish dish, there will be like fish in it. Fish in the uh, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, no. So the concern I would have for you is that depending on where you're going. I would, I would definitely get like the card or or do a Google Translate version of that. Yeah. But okay, there's a lot of depending on depending on the screenshot. Well, yeah, but depending on depending on what you're what you're looking to spend, 
like there are a lot of restaurants where it's like this is what we have like they might tell you this is an option that's okay for you but like, it's you literally like before you work yeah and they don't do custom anything they will right yeah. so that, that's what i'm saying like you can't yeah, be like you, be rude, but yeah, you, like, you can't be like don't be chance, clueless so. it's like no this is this is what the food is and you're either going to take it or you're not um so and yeah, that's that depends true, like i would i would recommend I would, at a worst case, in a worst case situation, I would recommend that you look into certain things like, I, I, if you don't want this, I'm not trying to sell it. It's a cheap place, but like Yoshinoya oh, or, yeah. or something. Yeah. The reason I say that is because you can find those anywhere. Mm. And so what you want to do is find at least a minimum dish that it's like, okay, I can at least go here and eat. And, and I mean, a simple answer for that is like, if you can eat sushi, like if fish isn't a problem, you can always find a place to get sushi. If nothing else, you go to a convenience store and get sushi. You can go to the nice department stores and get sushi. And yeah, you you're sure to have more places that are halal and uh, veggie friendly now. But I will yeah. say, if you are a vegetarian, they think that means no meat, not also no fish. You have to say no meat and no fish. So yeah, so it, it, it just kind of depends. But what I would, yeah, what I would recommend is at least due diligence beforehand to be like, here's some safe places you can go. Because yeah, your odds are there are going to be a fair number of places you might go where it's like, yeah, we, you're shit out of luck. I mean, yeah, we don't have anything for you. Depend on depend on what the specific thing is. Uh, you can't like, eat octopus and go to Osaka. Yeah, because I live at McDonald's. Oh man, it, 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 oh, if you're going. Okay, so 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 to not to not totally to not totally cut this off, but I'm like almost out of time. Like we're just about done. So if you, if you want to continue that conversation, you with them or, or something. Yeah, just like that. Did anybody, anybody else have did anybody else have a question they want before we before we wrap it? Because yeah, we're yeah. who has the panel at nine freaking a.m. I don't I don't plan the panels. I don't have a question, yeah. but I do have a comment going back to reservations that somebody mentioned. Uh, not hotels, but I did use Google Chrome to do like some of the translations for like when we did the Butler Cafe that yeah. helped out a lot. So like I was able to, and you know, it wasn't act like 100% accurate, but I got enough of it to be able to get the reservations and everything done. Yeah, you can use Google Translate to get through those types of things. I know. It's now, the, the one thing I would say though, you got to be careful with that because if you're trying to use, if you have to use web tools to translate the site, there's a decent chance they don't have an English stack. Oh yeah. yeah so when you true. show up, you gotta then deal with the fact that these people don't speak English and you gotta communicate with them. Again, yeah, you can do it. Really we just we just care every place we we spoke English and we got we got through it. So yeah, like I said, they'll they'll do their best to help you out. Yeah. Cool. Well thank you all for coming. I hope this is informative and I I hope you all get a chance to go because it is it is a beautiful movie. It's definitely great.